Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video I'll tell you guys how to start your own esports team. Now I've been a part of many esports teams. I have opened many esports teams throughout the years. I've mostly been a part of esports teams for like CSGO but I know more or less how to run esports teams for other games such as Rainbow Six Siege or Valorant as well because I've played those and I have had experience in those as well. Even though I have not been a player for a Valorant team or Rainbow Six Siege team, I had been the coach or the manager for those games as well. So I'll just tell you guys how to start your own esports team in this video from my experience and from what I have learned throughout the years. I've been in gaming since 2017 and it's been a while actually yeah <laughs> it's damn it's been actually a really long while but yeah anyway let's get right into this video so the first step is to have a team what do you want to do is um, have some people such as a designer or someone who's gonna help you manage things along with you uh, someone who's gonna help you get the players and everything so you just need a team of people that are willing to work with you and who are motivated so that's the first step basically get a team who will people who can basically design who can help you manage stuff who can help you with different player acquisitions and stuff but yeah just get a team that can basically um, help you do that do those and the next step comes to actually have a team name now sit down with your team and then select a team name tell your designer to make a logo if you don't have a designer if you are the one that's designing just make a logo that you think will be appropriate with your organization just do that and then um, keep on continuing once you have a nice name I think you are ready for the third step the third step is to actually scout for games what games do you want to target if you ask me personally I would suggest you to target one game at a time start out with one game that you guys are good at let's just say you have a team of four people and four of you always have played CSGO. I would suggest you to start a team of CSGO and then later on scale it to other games as well. But initially, I think you guys should start out with just one team in the game that you are experienced in. If you start a team on a different game that you don't really know about, let's just say you have never played Fortnite or something, you can't really start a team on that because you don't know the strats, you don't know how things work in the map, you don't know how to um, build or something. So always start a team on the game that you are experienced on. That would be my suggestion. But of course you are free to choose whatever you do. But yeah, for me I would suggest that um, always start a team that you are on a game that you are experienced on. So yeah, once you all once you have selected the team, selected the name and selected the team for your management and stuff, now we can actually move on to the next step which is to have the actual players in your team. Now, the way you recruit players for your main team is by actually playing ranked games or by playing games um, such as or games on Face It for example or ESEA or looking at local tournaments. Um, always keep an eye on local tournaments and check which players are doing really well. I don't think that you can probably target the champions or anything if they are already in a paid organization. But yeah, I think you can target some mid to low average players basically uh, for your team and then, you know, nurture it to basically um, be a top team or something. Um, so basically keep looking at the local team uh, local tournaments check which player is doing what check what they are playing check how they are playing and see if they are a rifler or something or like an um sniper or something just basically scout different types of players and then make a short list and then approach them one by one you can also search for players in ranked matches let's just say you are playing a ranked match and you see an opponent or a guy on your teammate that is playing really well you can actually approach him and ask him if he wants to be a part of your team just tell him that hey I'm making a team and I think you're playing really good um, I think that you will be a great addition to our team or something just say something that's convincing to him and then yeah basically just um, get that player that way 
So that leads us to the next step, which is to actually see if your players are um, in a good chemistry. Make sure that all you are taking care of your teammates really well. Make sure that they are getting what they need. Let's just say jerseys, for example. Let's just say the proper strats, for example, or a coach, or something like you know a mental um, break, like something that actually helps them. Always, t uh, always take care of your team. Always make sure that they are feeling their best. If, so, if a player just says that, hey, I cannot play today because I'm feeling a little depressed, do not pressurize that player. Always say that, okay, you're free to take your break, but make sure that you are uh, doing your practice or something. Or if a player has a family issue or like a personal issue, just tell that player that, yeah, okay, once you fix that, come back to the team and then, you know, practice and everything. Do not pressurize your players into like feeling that they are in a contract or in a bind or in a... I don't know, commitment or something. Just make them feel like home. Just greet them well, treat them well, and, you know, they'll be with you for a long time, even if you don't give them a salary. You don't really necessarily need to give players out a salary. You just need to take care of their basic needs, such as um, helping them give their fees when participating in a tournament, you know, the registration fees and everything, the jerseys, the traveling costs, the food costs and everything. Just provide them with all of those and you are good to go. Which actually brings me to my next point is that you need to have a little bit of budget. Um, the team that you have for your management, like the designer and the person that's going to help you with the management stuff, make sure that um, they are, if you're just doing it alone, just keep a little bit of budget for like a few tournaments. Let's just say that you are participating in a tournament uh, and it's a land tournament. Just make sure that you have the necessary costs to pay the players like the traveling fees or like the registration fees the fees that need you that you need to make the jerseys and everything so just make sure you have a budget and let's just say that you alone cannot put up a budget like that and the cost is very high for you what you can do is actually give your team the management team a stake in your esports team just tell them that hey if you invest um, X amount of money, then I'll give you 20% of the profits. Eventually, in an esports team, you're gonna make profit. Once the team starts to win tournaments, you can of course keep a cut for your organization because you are actually the one that set them up, you know? So you can keep a cut for yourself. So the cut you keep, you can just um, divide that to your teammates, um, your management team basically. So yeah, one, eventually you guys are going to make a profit or a significant amount of money. Not even significant, even if it's insignificant, it's going to be um, pretty much uh, a good amount to actually co cover up everything that you need for your esports team. But yeah, I'll come back to that later. But yeah, basically tell them that, hey, if you invest in this company, um, if you invest in this organization, I'm going to give you 10% or 5% or 20% of when we make or when we earn a profit. I think that they are going to be interested like let's just say you approach the designer and say hey I'm a bit short if you can fill up the um, little budget then I'm gonna give you X amount of percentage of when we make a profit I think he or she is gonna be like okay let's do it because number one they're getting an experience by working in an organization and number two they can eventually earn money they have a certain benefit at a certain point in time in the future so just make sure that they are also taken well they're also well taken care of and also make sure that your team that those are playing the players are also taken well cared of now let's come to another point that is actually setting up practice resumes what you have to do now that once you have all the players that you need and the team that you need you need to make sure that they know what they're doing guide them properly since you are i'll assume that you have started a team on a game that you have experience on so since you have experience on that game you can actually be their coach you can actually tell them what to do and how to practice what strats to practice if you really want a professional coach you can of course invest one but uh invest in one but i don't really think you will need that um, starting out um, when you start out early so just make sure that um, you basically have the experience and yeah 
I think you should be able to do it. But even if you don't know how to do it, there are some very friendly people in Reddit or other gaming co gaming communities that can give you a free coach. You can also try to acquis uh, you can also try to get a free coach for your team. Um, you can just tell them that hey, you have a benefit. You can actually be a part of your org. You can show other orgs that you have experience in coaching. We'll give you a letter of recommendation or a certificate that shows that yeah, you were a part of our team. You are a coach for this team. So I think you can actually um, lure them into your organization by showing them these benefits or something. But yeah, they, you can also find some um, free coaches that can give you a start. But basically, the point is that you have to make sure that your team knows what they are doing. Make sure that everyone um, knows what to practice, everyone knows what the other players are doing. Just keep regular meetings or meetings weekly to let everyone know and be friendly with them. Always try to be friendly with them because the more friendly you are, the more home feeling they have in your organization, the more likely they are going to stay and, and not leave your organization even if you um, don't provide a salary. I remember being in a part of a organization that actually um, doesn't pay me for what I do but I've gotten offers from other organizations for payments like come to our organization and we'll pay you for this this and this but I still I still did not um, leave the organization I'm currently in because to be honest it feels like home and I have known a lot of people I've learned a lot of things from them more uh, I've learned a lot of things about my personal life and how to deal with different kinds of situation like depression and everything and how to deal with academic pressures and everything as well so now make sure to always look after your team your look after your players basically um, you don't want them to feel like they are in something that is pressurizing them or something that's forceful to them always make sure that they have a home feeling and always make sure to take care when they need a break or anything and make sure to assess their performance a periodically let's just say monthly or weekly just make sure that they are filling their uh, practice quotas individual practice quotas and make sure that they are actually improving always make sure that the team or the player that you are coaching or you are managing make sure that they are actually improving you're seeing progress so progress is very important let's just say a player used to crack 20 kills in one match and in every match he played let's just say now he's able to crack 30 kills every match that's actually called progress you actually improve that player by helping them prepare strats or everything or anything let's just say you guided them that you should always do this you should always do that and that lead and that leads to them being able to crack more kills that's actually called progress but let's just say that their player is not improving it's been like two three months that he's still the same or even is like he's not even playing really well like that's not progress they're actually not performing very well so in that scenario i would say you should change your players so make sure to assess the performance of your players and make sure to look after your players now the next thing is to actually arrange practice matches no matter how much you train your players yourself they will not gain the proper experience if they do not have practice matches with other teams if they do not have practice in LAN tournaments or other tournaments. Always keep an eye on your local tournaments and make sure that your team is actually participating on them. Make sure that one of your team member, one of your management team member is actually finding you the ongoing local tournaments and then helping you to register your team for those and make sure to basically arrange practice matches, scrims that we call them, to so that you know they can um, practice and gain experience because the amount of experience that a person needs can only be achieved through tournaments or practice matches. Practice matches will help you assess what player is performing, how and what things that they lack in. So, And even in local tournaments, they can actually gain experience and then reduce their anxieties and everything. So, yeah, always make sure to arrange practice matches and join local tournaments. But do make sure that you're joining local tournaments 
after you build your team chemistry like without a proper synergy without knowing proper strats and proper lineups you can't actually join local tournaments you'll basically um, be smashed into two uh, little pieces or something because there are better teams than you always remember that other people are better than you do not have that ego that you are the best or you have the best players if your players are good individually it does not mean that they will be great as a team it we have seen it multiple times we have seen it in countless occasions that when individual players are really well perf putting them together in one team sometimes does not work or oftentimes it does not work because they are great individual players but as a team they do not have that same mentality they do not have that same motivation they do not have that same skill level and they do not have that same um, feeling of being in a team and you know not being egoistic or not stealing cubes you have to make sure that the vision of your team is also the vision that the players carry make sure that every player in your team is in a loop make sure that the team chemistry is perfect and only then join local tournaments and always make sure to have social media pres uh, presence because social media presence and the next point I'm gonna make uh, mention is sponsorship uh, they're actually pretty much linked always make sure that your social media presence is up to date like make sure you have a Facebook page make sure you have an Instagram account make sure you have a Twitter account and make sure you have a YouTube channel you know all the basic social media stuff make sure you are posting regularly even if you play a practice match even if you beat those players in a even if you beat a team in a practice match just post that the boys did another victory on a practice match against XYZ esports or something just keep your social media up to date and even post what player achieved what like let's just say your player has achieved a new rank in the game you are hosting the team on so just post that um, let's just say congratulations to player XYZ for uh, going to this rank or that rank for being uh, I don't know like an ascendant or diamond for example or congratulations to X for being an immortal now on Valorant for example so just post your achievements post everything that you can on your social media social media presence is very important for you to get sponsors because eventually you are going to approach businesses to sponsor your team there are many businesses that are understanding the growth rate of esports they know how important esports is and how big the market of esports is just tell them that you will be able to promote your business uh, promote their business and make sure that you actually fulfill those promises the promises that you make and just tell them that if this team wins a tournament it's gonna be helpful for you because we can say that they were our sponsors for this team without them hosting this team wouldn't be possible and everything blah 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 just tell them stuff to um, encourage them to sponsor you because without sponsorships we you cannot survive in a in the esports market you can approach Logitech of course you have to be really good you can approach local restaurants you can approach local glove makers or local soft drink companies or local you know you can approach any business that you want just make sure that they know what they are actually sponsoring many times if you just say hey can you sponsor us they're not going to bother you just have to tell you have to tell them in a proper way that hey we have a team we are in the gaming sector and we believe that this team can actually uh, win tournaments would you like to sponsor us of course you can of course um, change up the words and everything but make sure to just tell something that's convincing and of course don't lie to your sponsors or your players do not lie to your uh, teammates or your management team or your sponsors always keep honesty and always be ethical without ethics you really cannot do anything in life this is not even a esports team this is not even an esports tip but always make sure that you are ethical and you do things fairly because the more unethical you will be the more problems will you will have and the more controversy will you have so always avoid controversy and always make sure that you are honest because honesty is key even though a lot of people are gonna say that 
this guy is not saying the true things no honesty cannot be done or anything but that's not the thing you can be honest and you can be successful on being dishonest is not a part of success but being honest and being successful is actually the better achievement or the greatest achievement one can achieve so make sure you are honest and make sure that you follow all these steps so as a recap let's just go through everything make sure to have a management team you need a designer and you need few other people with you to actually manage the whole organization make sure to have a small budget make sure you know that um, this amount of money will be spent in, the, in this organization and make sure to have a logo and a team name then you can search for team players and team players can be any players you can find players on local tournaments ranked matches or even third party apps like Faceit, ESEA always focus on one game at a time so select the game and then select the players make sure that the team chemistry is in place and look after your team look after your players look after everyone and make sure to assess their performance periodically or whenever you feel it's necessary make sure to arrange practice matches and jo uh, keep your players in a tournament always make sure that there are tournaments they are participating have a social media presence post on your social media regularly and reach out to businesses for sponsorships so that's about it i think this sums up this video i really really hope that this video was useful and you find it um useful actually and hopefully this will help you start out your esports team if you need a designer or if you need even further guidance you can of course leave uh, your comments uh, leave your questions down in the comment section below um, if you have any questions that is and if you need a designer you can also tell me if you need one I can actually design or hook up you hook you up with a nice designer that's gonna work for free if you have a budget and you can spend on designers you can actually consider me I'll share my work and everything but if you're just starting out I'll do your designs for free as well no worries but yeah with this, I'll end this video over here. Thank you for watching and take care, everybody.